games are probably most fun when there's an element of randomness, like when you're playing a board game and you get to use a die or even multiple dice. Thankfully, GameMaker includes random functions. I've put them all into one script, and we're going to call each one individually. Now, the first one GameMaker has is called Choose. This is quite easy. You just put in any amount of arguments you want, up to 16 arguments, and the beauty is this can be anywhere from a string to an integer or even real number, which means it can include decimal places. It can be a variable you have in your game. It can even be a constant. So here I've made a list. I've got 1.56, that's a real number. I've got 45, that's an integer, also a real number, but an integer because it's a whole number. Same with 92. I can include a string. I can even have a function, sprite get name, get the name of this sprite, so sprite random, that's over here. And even the image index, that is the current sub-image that is being displayed for this particular object's sprite. Normally you wouldn't include all of these different ones. You'd want to list all numbers or all strings or all image index or sprite indexes. It just depends on what you're doing choose for. I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like when I display this in a game. So in this room I've got a button called random button and a display field down here. And it randomly chose the number 45 from that list that I had in the function. If I click the button, GameMaker will choose something else. It now chose 1.56. I can keep clicking it, 92, 0. That is the current image index for this sprite. I only have one image index, only one sub-image, so of course the image index can only be 0. If we were animating, that number would constantly be increasing until it hit the maximum number, and then it would go back down to 0. And there we go, there's the sprite it is, it's the sprite random, and it just does that, just randomly selects anything you want. Now what's great about this is you can use it to display different things in your game. You can use it to randomly choose from a list of enemies, randomly choose from a list of sub-images. In fact, I've got that in the next room. In here, I've got a red square. Now this red square has a whole bunch of sub-images ranging from red to blue, and I'm a I apologize if you have some form of color blindness, but this is using a gradient going from red to blue. And there are 16 sub-images in total. And I've told GameMaker to randomly choose which sub-image to take out of this sprite or object. Down here I've got the object, and when it's created, I don't want it to animate, so I've set the speed to zero, but I've set the image index to equal choose. And now I've told GameMaker to use either Subimage 0, 3, 7, 11, or 15. That means every time I restart the room, GameMaker will select from those numbers and then display that image. This can also be used for choosing which instances to create. If you want to create different uh, enemies or players or whatever is in your game, you can use choose, list the ones you want up to 16, and GameMaker will evenly pick one of them. Every, every single thing in here, every argument, has an even distribution or even chance of showing up. Now let's deal with simply random numbers. So we'll comment out, choose, and I'll hop down here to random. Now there are two kinds of randoms. There's random and random range. Random will return a random real number. Remember, real number means that it can have decimal places, so this isn't a whole number, it's not an integer, between 0 and n. It will never actually choose n. So in this case, you put your upper limit, I've chosen 20. 20 will never come up. The highest number will be 19.9999, um, all the way to the amount of decimal places allowed. So if I show you this as an example, I hop into my room, Every time I click the random button, a new real number between 0, 0, .00 and 19.99 will appear here. The reason it only displays two decimal places is any real value displayed as a string only uses, by default, two decimal places. You can change that, and we'll go into that in another video. But if I click this button, it'll just generate numbers in between 0, 0.00 and 19.99. It'll never actually choose 20. So if you don't need integers or whole numbers, this is a great way to just get a random value like that uh, in between 0 and a full number. 
For instance, if I put in something like 360, which is how many whole degrees there are in a circle, GameMaker will now choose between 0 and 359.9. That's all the way around a circle. So you can use this to be something's direction. So I can randomly choose a direction for my object to travel in anywhere between 0, which is all the way to the right, counterclockwise all the way around to 359.9. But that's just an example of what you can do with random. Now perhaps you don't want zero to be the lowest number random can choose, and for that you can use random range. This will allow you to set the lowest number chosen and the highest number chosen. The difference here is that random range will select the highest number. So this range will select anywhere between 10.00 and 20.00. If I run the game, you'll see it select various numbers in between every time I click on my random button. So here's 11.55, and it just cycles through randomly between 10 and 20. 20 can now be included. As an example, I can choose 19.98. So now it can choose 19.98, 19.99, and 20.00. Now, of course, it's probably choosing numbers that are a little more minute than that. It probably has more decimal places. But my string format is only allowing me to show two decimal places at once. So if I run this game, it'll now choose between 19.98, 19.99, and 20.00. However, every time I click, it may not always change because it's probably changing decimal numbers we don't see. But there we go, keep clicking it, there's 20.00 to show that it does choose the top number for this range. Now you may not always want to use numbers with decimal places. And for that, all you have to do is put the letter I in front of random and random range. This makes sure that GameMaker will only choose whole numbers or integers. So in this case, I've chosen between 0 and 5, I can only produce 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if I run this, GameMaker will no longer show decimal places. This is actually great for something like a six-sided die. If I roll, it's like I rolled a 2, or a 3, or a 4. And it'll just keep doing that, selecting from the lowest one, which is 0, all the way to the highest one, which is 5. It will choose this top number. Uh, if you wanted it to be exactly like a die, we can add 1 to it just so it doesn't start at 0. Now GameMaker will display anywhere between 1 and 6, just like you're rolling a 6-sided die playing a board game. This also applies to random range. You can put the letter I in front of random range to get an integer version of random range. So this will not choose decimal places. This will choose between 10 and 20 whole numbers only. Now my lower limit is 10. I can't choose any lower than that. And I can just keep clicking around, getting random values between 10 and 20, which is inclusive. It will have the 10 and the 20. One slight problem with random, every time I run the game, you may notice that it always chooses the same number first, the same number second, the same number third. That's not random, that's actually in order. The reason for that is computers can't just generate numbers out of thin air. They can't be completely random. They base their numbers on some sort of other value, some sort of calculation, and that's called a seed. Down here, there are three functions I want to talk about when generating random numbers. One is random set seed, the other is random get seed, and the very last is just randomize. Now, if I were to run my game, I would always get the same series of numbers. To prove that, let's ask iRandom to give me a die roll of a d6. So you see the first number it's chosen is 6, then 3, then 4. If I close the game and I launch it again, I should get the same numbers in the same sequence. 6, 3, 4. That's not random, it's predictable. And the reason for that is those numbers are generated based on a seed, and we haven't changed the seed. So, let's do that. I've got an object control, or a control object, and inside I'm setting my randomize. Now you may have noticed at the top of the game screen I am displaying the game seed. Every time I run the game, I'm getting the seed of zero. That's it, GameMaker chooses zero as the seed. That's because we haven't changed the seed in any way. Now we can do that 
with random set seed. We can change the seed to any value we want. I'm going to pick something arbitrary like 55. It's not really important right now unless we needed to know this number for later to create a procedurally generated game like Minecraft where the player may need to know this seed to use the seed again to create the same world every time. So if I use seed 55, let's see what happens. So now my game seed is set to 55. 6 is my first value, but if I hit the randomize button, now it's 2 and then 4. It used to be 4 or 3 or 3 or 4, but now we're getting different values. Now it truly is random. Sort of. If I run it again, I'm going to get the same numbers in the same sequence again. I get 6, I get 2, I get 4. Still not random, I've only changed the seed. If we want GameMaker to pick a random seed every single time, what we could do is choose Randomize. This function is very easy. It just sets the seed to a random value. Now we don't have to set the seed ourselves. So if I run the game, you'll see at the top the game seed will be some sort of long integer. There we go, this long value. That is our new seed. So now if I hit the randomize button, we're going to get different values. And every time I reset the game, we'll get a different seed. And therefore, anything that is using random functions will truly be random. At least, that's how the player will perceive it. Now one more note about randomize. If you're testing your game, you probably don't want your game to be random. You don't want to use randomize when you're testing. You want things to be predictable so you can debug. You want to know where problems are happening. But when you go to ship your game, just throw this in at the very beginning of your game, and then everything will be randomized. Every time your game launches, GameMaker will create a new seed unless you're making a procedurally generated game, in which case you can control your own seeds or let the player control their seed, and then they can always get the same sequence from random functions. And with that, I hope you now know how to generate random values in GameMaker, whether that's to get random numbers like a die roll or use it more dynamically to create random sprites or generate random enemies. It's really fun to play around with random.